Okay, so this story regarding comedian Andrew Schultz has been trending for almost a week. Just to give you some context, Schultz had a couple fellow podcasters from the UK shits and gigs on his podcast called Flagrant. The Flagrant podcast is basically Andrew, another comedian named Akash, and two other co-hosts, and they delve into comedy, politics, culture, and trending news. So when those two British podcasters came on Schultz's show, the conversation turned towards black women whose ships and gigs have a loyal and huge following up, and that's when Andrew began to turn up the heat with the jokes. I'm going to play you a clip of what jokes he made, and then I want you to see the reaction of the two UK podcasters. Wait, what is, the, what is the black girlfriend effect? This oh, is you, don't know you about just glow up the other culture. Yeah, so you'll see a, a, a guy who's had a black girlfriend, all of a sudden he's got buzz cut, like, yeah. clean shape up. Nah, he's nah, yeah. 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 Glows up, bro. Yeah, I like that. that. I like that. Fuck that. <laughs> they yeah. shave their hair because they start losing it. Because they're so stressed <laughs> yes. around this black girl complaining about shit all the fucking time. <laughs> That's why they got to shave their nah, hair. Nah, bro. White guys with black girlfriends, they, they, they grow step, a beard because there's more cushion when they get slapped the fuck out of it. <laughs> that's hilarious. We just wanted to address something that's happening at the minute. Yep. This past weekend, uh, there's been a couple of clips going around uh, from when we did a session on the Flagrant podcast um, while we were on our US tour. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there were a few jokes made um, that were incredibly inappropriate. One, speci <laughs> bro, incredibly. one specifically pertaining to black women. Yep. Um, and in the clip, um, Andrew was making a joke. Uh, I'm not even going to get into specifics. Making a, uh, like, frankly, like, racist joke. Yeah. And we were laughing at it. Mm -hmm. And to give, there's, there's, first of all, before we get into, like, specifics or anything like that, obviously, there's just literally no excuse. There is no excuse. Agreed. Um, and fight or flight is a real thing. Like, it is, yeah. Fight or flight is a real thing. And it's so, not easy to say, but... When you're in those situations, you you look at it through a lens of like, bro, if it was me, I promise you I'll stand up, I'll kick them cameras down, yeah. I'll smack homeboy in the face, yeah. I'll say this, I'll do that. But when you're in there, you're in shock. You're in shock and all you want to do is move on. Okay, so following that podcast that happened in July, it took about two months for people to start canceling these two Brits. So as mentioned earlier, their podcast is from the UK and they have a deep following of black females and basically their core audience wasn't too happy after they saw the clip making the rounds. The fact that these two were laughing and not sticking up for black women made the situation worse in the eyes of their fans. So Ryan Clark, Channing Crowder and Fred Taylor chimed in on the story on their Pivot podcast and listened to what RC and company had to say. The, the first thing is, when you think about the two podcasters from the UK is we don't know if the black experience there is the same as the black experience for African Americans or black people that grew up in America. I'm sure to be on this media tour in the US and to sit with Andrew Schultz was a big thing for them. I don't care if it was a big thing. And in addressing Andrew Schultz, who I do think is funny, who sits with Charlemagne and, and has some of these discussion about the culture, I believe he got too comfortable. So I would like to explain some things to him. I want to explain to him the black experience, the black woman experience from my point of view. It was watching my mother start from a bank teller and wake, work her way up for decades to run her own collateral department only to be mistreated when the bank was sold to another bank and be so sick on Sunday that I finally had to say, hey mom, you're old enough to retire. It was to see her go to that same job eight to five to be treated anyway that she had to be treated because she only had a high school diploma and then find ways to not only feed me but do homework with me and my brother, take us to practice because my dad worked three jobs. That was the first black woman experience that I had, right? The second black woman experience I had is marrying a black woman and watching her sleep on my cot as doctors try to figure out why I'm 140 pounds and I'm a 30 year old man who was 205 pounds a month before that. Her telling me months after that she would just go in the bathroom and cry every night in the hospital because she didn't want me to worry about her because I was so sick, right? For her to hold my family together so I could be in the household with my children when I was doing things and I wasn't shit. That's the black woman experience. The black woman experience is black women caring so much about the nuclear black family, black women taking care of young black men to teach them how to be leaders, to teach them how to be strong, to teach them how to care about their God, about their family, and it's about their communities. And to raise their young black women to be independent enough to take care of themselves, but to understand how to support a family, how to support a man, while also understanding how to get it on your own. That's the black woman experience that I know. 
The reason that black women are tough is because when you're mistreated in the way that black women are, if you're not tough, you just die off, you don't survive. That's the black woman experience. And the other piece of it is too, is something that I've learned and I learned it from black women is people feel so comfortable disrespecting them because we don't respect them publicly, right? White people for so long have used the excuse, why can't I say the N word when you say that to yourselves or call yourself that or use that in your music, music which is bullshit, right? Or white people have said, if you're using the B word or they say, if you're using the B word, why can't I call them that? That's bullshit as well, right? That's excuses to be certain things and be disrespectful when you shouldn't be. So when you're sitting across from Andrew Schultz and he's talking about a spirit, an experience that he can't understand because his wife is not black, you don't have the right to talk about it. You don't have the right to speak on something that you don't know, right? And to make a joke about what the experience is, is one thing if you're talking about haircuts and you're talking about clothing and you're talking about beards, or you're comparing what our friend Travis Kelsey looked like when he was with Kayla Nicole to what he looks like now that he's with Taylor Swift, right? That is part of it. You start to assimilate to the people around you. What you're not gonna do though, is be disrespectful and say you have to develop a defense mechanism because of alleged violence. Black women aren't violent. Black women don't just walk around to beat people or to be angry or to be treated a certain way. No, black women to me were the entire front line of the Alton Sterling protests when he died, when he was killed by cops in Louisiana. Black women are on the front lines of everything that's about us. Black women understood that they had to take a back seat because as we were fighting for rights in our country, that we as men were gonna be able to get through the door before they were. So they decided to push us forward and give us ideas and give us help and give us support and be our biggest cheerleaders because they knew we'll have an opportunity to get in the door first. The problem is, so many times now we're getting in those doors and we aren't reaching back and bringing them through that same door with us. And this is just another example of that. So whoever is Andrew Schultz's black friend, Charlemagne, you're his black friend, sit him down, talk to him, tell him what the black woman experience truly is because he ain't married to one and he's obviously never been around enough of them to know how strong, how beautiful, how independent they could be while also being supportive, how much black women have done to create this entire world that we all live in and the way that they've poured in it. I'd rather be upset, but I know if I'm upset and I'm loud, that just plays into the same, the same angry black woman trope to the black man trope that he wants us to depict. And I refuse to give him that joy. So this clip got about over 30,000 likes on Twitter, but a lot of people, black and white, went in on Ryan Clark, mainly because of the fact that Andrew Schultz is a comedian and it was his own podcast platform they were on, which is known to be very open with jokes. On top of that, there's always the issue of double standards. Andrew doesn't really hold back on anyone, whatever race, gender, or sexual orientation, he don't care. It's basically open season on everybody. Like imagine if we were only allowed to say jokes that didn't offend anybody. Dave Chappelle's whole LGBT bit would be thrown out the window. Like I understand where RC is coming from because he holds black women in high esteem, but you could make that case for literally any other group or community. Anyways, here are some of the Twitter posts calling out RC and I want to know what you guys think. One user wrote, I hate how soft ninjas are now, man. Shake my head. All these sad ass think pieces over jokes. As one of the dirtiest players in the NFL, someone who played with reckless abandon, someone who intentionally tried to injure humans for sport, I thought you'd be a little tougher bro. And RC replied, more than welcome to try me to see how tough, good brother. But jokes are only funny if the subject believes so. Same as my joke about Tua last year, I thought it was funny, other players thought it was funny, my Claude Lee thought it was funny, he and his people didn't. Okay, so that reply there started triggering more people to respond because Ryan basically doubled down on the idea that jokes aren't jokes if the other party doesn't find it funny. He got ratioed by one guy who tweeted, I have no idea who Andrew Schultz is or what his comments were, but jokes are only funny if the subject believes so is one of the most inaccurate statements I've read in my life. Another guy tweeted, oh my god, stop treating black women like make-a-wish kids. Are they on the no jokes list alongside children? The Hodge twins tweeted, you weak as hell bro, shake my head. And lastly, ain't ever beating the soft allegations now. Okay, so like I said, most people were in agreement with RC's take, but he certainly had a quite a fair share of his detractors. 
Like I said earlier for me, this is a really sensitive topic, but comedy is comedy and nobody should be protected. These are literally jokes we're talking about and obviously there's going to be a ton of stereotypes. That said, what do you think about this story? Was RC right for going after Andrew Schultz?